Welcome back, everybody. Now, Patricia De Lille, the leader of the Good Party, will file an application at the High Court in Cape Town to stop the Democratic Alliance, or the DA, from spreading lies about her departure from the party. Now, this follows uh, after the DA told potential voters during teleconferencing that they had fired De Lille from her position as Cape Town mayor. Last week, the Electoral Commission of the South Africa, or the IEC, ordered the DA to apologize to the Good leader as they have breached the Electoral Act and Code by instructing their call center operatives to tell voters that DeLille was indeed fired. Well, the DA has, however, refused to apologize. Patricia DeLille joins me now from our Parliament studios in Cape Town, and uh, we hope to be joined by the Johannesburg, by, by the DA Houting Legislature Chief Whip Mike Moriarty. He is actually on his way, and uh, he'll be giving us uh, the DA's side of the story. Ma'am DeLille, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us, and welcome to Morning Live. Good morning, Sampuwe. Well, would you say that uh, the misinformation from the DA about uh, you being fired is actually cheap, cheap politicking? Uh, the DA would rather lie or tell lies about my reasons for resignation than to admit that the real issues was that the DA's anti-transformation and they also against the undoing of the apartheid spatial planning. In my replying affidavit yesterday before my lawyers, I was able to produce an agreement that was signed on the 25th of July, where in fact the party agreed with me that we will go for a disciplinary hearing that will be open to the public and the media. We further agreed that there will be a pre-trial conference between our lawyers and that the charge sheet will be served on me within 24 hours. Indeed, the charge sheet has been served. We then proceeded to announce that to the public that finally, after months of struggling with the DA, they have agreed to a disciplinary hearing open to the public and to the media. We then, we then had to proceed on the Monday with the disciplinary hearing when on the Sunday night, I was approached by Musi Mamani, the leader, to say to me that the party will, is now prepared to withdraw the charges because they cannot afford this public uh, um, broadcast of the disciplinary hearing. It's going to do a lot of brand damage. Musi Mamani likened the hearing to the uh, Oscar Pistorius trial where people will buy popcorn and, uh, and, and watch it the, the, the whole day. And it's for that reason that the DA withdraw the charges, not in exchange for my resignation. And so it is a lie, it is a damn lie to say that I have resigned in exchange for them dropping the charges. So my lawyers are making an urban application today and we hope that the case will be heard before the elections because the DA's intention is to do damage to my name and to my reputation. And I want this to be settled before the elections because the DA have defied and they've refused to carry out the instruction or the finding of the IEC uh, that they must apologize to me. Well, the DA says that it actually fired you. You said, no, you actually resigned. You're now taking the matter to, I mean, you, you, you lodged a complaint <laughs> to the IEC saying that the DA is peddling lies about you. The IEC ordered the DA to apologize, but they've publicly refused to apologize. So what kind of apology are you, are you looking, are you expecting from the DA? Well, I'm expecting exactly a public apology that they have to apologize uh, to, uh, via the mass media. They also have to phone every one of the voters that they have lied to, that they've given misinformation to say that they have lied. And um, I will accept nothing less than that. 
And that's why I'm going for an interdict now to force them to apologize. Well, Mr. Little, it's a known fact that the Democratic Alliance has always wanted you out of the party. They tried every trick uh, in the book to kick you out of the party. When you finally gave in to the pressure to resign, yes. you actually did so on your own terms, the terms that were authored by yourself. So would it then, how then can you confidently say that you actually resigned when the DA uh, kicked you out and orchestrated, initially orchestrated your departure <laughs> from the party? Well, first of all, I resigned on the steps of the High Court in Cape Town. That is after I have won three court cases against the DA. The High Court, with a full bench, found that the DA did not uh, adhere to their own constitution or to the constitution of the country. And so they've lost all of those court cases. I had given three months notice that I will resign. I worked out three months to hand over, to conclude some of the projects that I was busy with. So nobody has forced me to resign. I walked away from a very dehumanizing experience. I was in an abusive relationship with the DA. They abused me. And when you're in an abusive relationship, you walk away as, as, as a woman. And so there's absolutely no truth that I exchange my resignation. How can I when I've won just about every single case against them? Do you think the DA is threatened by you? Well, the DA is just arrogant and they are a bunch of blue liars. And you know what? They're trying to fool the people of South Africa. The people are not stupid. They can see through the lies of the DA. But as usual, you know, they want to be ordered by a court of law. And that is why I'm turning to, to the uh, judiciary, because I put my faith in the hands of the judiciary, our independent judiciary. Why is it important uh, to order the DA to publicly apologize to you? I mean, uh, everybody is busy with the election. All parties are busy with their electioneering processes. I mean, shouldn't you rather be telling your members or your followers and supporters what you will be doing for them? Well, I have been doing so for the past four months since the formation of the Good Movement. Every single day I've been out there. It's the day DA fail on a daily basis to tell South Africans what they are all about and why the voters should vote for them. The only thing that they want to do because they feel threatened by the good movement is to go about spreading lies about good, but we will continue to spread the message of hope and reconciliations and mobilize all good South Africans to come together to save our country because I'm a patriot, I love this country, I want to see my country succeed. So I've been running a very positive campaign, spreading a good message, not talking about other political parties all the time. I think uh, good members and non-good members, I think they've got some sort of idea of what kind of a leader you are. They've already made up their mind. So if the DA eventually apologizes to you publicly, what difference would it make? Because people already ha have got sort of, uh, sort of some convictions in their minds about uh, how the whole matter panned out. Well, first of all, I have to clear my name. I set that on a campaign two years ago to clear my name. I've worked very hard to become a household name in this country. My name has become synonymous with fighting corruption. And therefore, I cannot afford, my name is priceless. I will put in everything to, to, uh, uh, to protect my name. I will not allow a bunch of blue liars to continue to smear my name, because those people never fought for the freedom that we have today. They never fought for the Bill of Rights. They were there, they voted for apartheid. 
I fought for the freedom of this country, and so I know my rights. And I will advise all South Africans to continue to fight for their rights and not allow anybody to trample on your constitutional rights. Well, the DA says that they will not apologize to you because, I mean, based on the orders of the IEC, because the IEC uh, says that, uh, I mean, the, the DA says the IEC is actually overstepping their mandate. Do you agree? Well, first of all, they're very hypocritical. About two weeks ago, the DA laid a complaint against the Good Movement, the EFF, and the ACDP about our posters. The IEC ruled against us, and the IEC instructed us to, um, to rectify the situation, which we did. They only respect the IEC when the ruling is in their favor. When it's not in their favor, they attack the IEC. I think that all political parties have signed the Code of Conduct. We accept the rules in the Code of Conduct. And we must all adhere to the commitment and, and, and what we've signed to make sure that we have a free and fair elections. All right, what is it? Because uh, now Mike Moriarty, the DA chief whip in Gauteng, is here in studio. He's, uh, he's joining us. What is it that you'd like to say to him? Yeah. Well, I want to say to Mike Moriarty that I've heard, I've listened to all his interviews that I've got a signed agreement, signed on the 25th of July, that the party will proceed with a disciplinary hearing that's open to the public, that the party will give me the charge sheet within 24 hours, and that my lawyers will have a pre-trial uh, uh, um, conference with the DA lawyers. This is the agreement. So, it was not me who asked for the withdrawal of the charges in exchange to resign. Unless you've got the proof, you must stop lying. It was your leader, Musi Mamani, that came to me on Sunday night of the 27th, of, of the 29th of July and said to me that the party have now agreed to this open hearing, open to the public, but the party cannot afford the brand damage that will be done by having this disciplinary hearing broadcast on television. Your leader actually said that it will be like an Oscar Pistorius trial and that the DA cannot afford that. So stop lying to say that I have resigned in exchange, there was no such thing. Yeah, and, and here is the proof, and right. this is part of my court papers that I filed yesterday. All right. Mr. Mike Moriarty, very good morning to you, and Hello, welcome Supreme. to Morning Live. Thank you. Patricia DeLille says that, uh, well, it's a blue lie that she actually resigned, uh, I mean, in exchange for dropping the charges. Did you fire the DA? Uh, did, did you fire Patricia DeLille? Well, as far as we're concerned, there's a matter of fair comment, and that's, our issue is not with DeLille, it's with the uh, IEC, quite frankly. Uh, we think that the IEC has been inconsistent and has overreached itself. It doesn't have the powers to make judgments like a court can. And so our basis for our court action, which should be heard on Friday, we hope, uh, is that the court should uh, rule on whether or not the IEC can indeed make instructions of a binding nature. But we don't did believe the DA that we can. fire Patricia DeLille or not? You know, the, our lawyers advise us that what we're dealing with here is fair comment. And they have advised us that it's fair comment that we can say that uh, in response to a, a caller that calls into our call center and says, uh, why did you fire Dalil? This, is, this would be our response. Whether we're right or wrong, the court will decide and we will abide by the outcome of the court. But the fact that there's been teleconversing messages during the rounds telling voters that Patricia Delille was in fact fired, is, I mean, is in fact uh, the, the reason why Delille is out in the cold. You know, there are a number of people who are going to argue, yes, she was fired or no, she was not fired. Some people would cite things like the fact that uh, Delille lost a, a vote of no confidence. Well, surely she's then being fired by her caucus. So I don't want to get involved in all of those 
myriad of things that people are going to say. I want the court to make the decision, but more principally on the CRISP matter is does the IEC have the power to make binding decisions? We say they don't. So if the court uh, does indeed rule in favor of Petitia de Lille, will the DA abide by that court ruling? Absolutely, without a doubt. Or right, including calling the million voters that uh, de Lille was actually... In well, I think that that's highly impractical, um, but anyway, if the court decides something, we've got to take it there, and if we can abide by it, we would certainly abide. If we've got an argument that says, well, actually it's impractical, then we would have to go to another court to see if we can have the ruling set aside. But we're in a position to say, yes, we, of course we will abide by the outcome of a competent court. So am I then correct to say that the Democratic Alliance is actually so obsessed with Patricia DeLille? I mean, you wanted her out of the party now that she's out of the party, minding her own business, but you're still on her case. Shouldn't you rather be telling your voters, your supporters or potential voters, what the DA will be doing uh, in, 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 for them in their coming elections? Simply, we do all that all the time. And uh, we spend far more time telling uh, the voters of South Africa that there's an opportunity on May the 8th to vote for change, a change that will bring real jobs, a change that will end corruption. And, uh, you know, as we do that, we never talk about Delil. We never ever do. It's only in response to somebody who charges us with a wrongdoing for firing Delil that we actually give a response. We don't go out there and actively uh, make these things. We, you know, it, it, had it been any other political person in the same situation, we would have responded in exactly the same way. All right. Mr. Lil, do you actually have the proof that the DA is going around telling voters and potential voters that they actually fired you? What kind of proof do you have? Well, the, the proof we have submitted to the IEC, um, we were able to obtain a copy of the script uh, that they've instructed all the tele uh, canvases uh, to use. And I've also submitted to the IEC a copy of my uh, resignation letter to show uh, that I have resigned. The DA has not been able to submit any evidence to the IEC that in fact they have fired me. So that is the crux of the matter. I've got the proof that I've resigned. The DA doesn't have the proof that they fired me. And that is why the IEC ruled against them. If they have any proof to show that they fired me, then they must put it before the IEC or before the review that they are now bringing uh, to the court. I expect their right to bring a review. They must also respect my right to bring an interdict against them from spreading lies. The right. DA must learn that you cannot spin lies. You can only spin the truth. And that is where they've been failing hopelessly because they are all scripted. They are scripted what to say and how to say it. And they will repeat that script religiously even if they are telling right. a lie. Mr. Dillard, unfortunately, we don't have much time. Patricia Dillard, uh, leader of the Good Party, and uh, Mr. Mike Moriarty, Thank you. Thank you, the DHF, we've been the Houting Legislature. Thanks to you two for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much.